Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. It also goes out on the Lilydale Assembly Facebook page as well as YouTube channel, and it's wonderful. Each week I have a special guest on the show, and we cover a spiritual topic relating to either spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, or more. And it's one of those things that over the last seven years, yes, seven years that Wednesdays with Willa has been going on, um, I really learn as much as all of you do as well. And I encourage you to look back at the archive videos of the show. You can find those on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium, and also my YouTube channel. I know a lot of people like to binge watch the show and they really enjoy learning and growing and, and finding the different topics. So you can search by a guest's name or a topic. And I want to introduce to the show Patricia Price. She has been here before and she is such a delight. Thanks for being on the show today, Patricia. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for asking me. Absolutely. And Patricia is here to share about the vortexes of Lily Dell. And she's a perfect person to do that because she wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she is an author of uh, many other uh, books as well, but she is a uh, medium and spiritual teacher and is, she's actually one of my past mentors and uh, she also has the Trilogy Institute that she teaches uh, through with uh, mediumship and uh, advanced things including uh, transformational breath work that you have coming up in May right? You have yes a, we're gonna do a weekend. A weekend in May so people can find out more information about that on your website Patricia. Right. And uh, transformational breath work is definitely something that can be a profound experience and to be able to help other people through that is beautiful. And uh, Patricia brings a, a lot of knowledge about energy, not just breath work, but energy and spirit connection. And I know uh, past shows that we've done, we talked about even um, spirit guides and angels and higher beings. And uh, I encourage people to look back at that past show. It was uh, one of my favorites, I have to say. <laughs> so um, today, as I said, our topic will be vortexes of Lilydale. And I know a lot of people will be coming to Lilydale for this coming uh, Monday, April 8th. We have the solar eclipse mm -hmm. and Lilydale is in the path of totality. So there have been a, a lot of shows to explain about those things. In fact, last week I uh, had a wonderful guest come on the show and share about the energy activations of the solar eclipse. There are a lot of events you can attend uh, via Zoom or come in person to Lilydale. I encourage you to check out the lilydaleassembly.org website for that, as well as the upcoming summer season. Uh, the 2024 Lilydale summer season starts on June 21st and, and runs until September 1st this year. Uh, so it's 10 weeks of Lots of workshops and classes and daily events, message services, healing services galore. So take a look at those things. And before I forget, I do have some upcoming classes to let you know about. Um, my Monday Night Circle will resume on April 15th. And it's a six week series. Uh, so people who are wanting to understand and to give and receive messages with other people can take a look at that. As well as on April 13th, I have um, a one day class that is uh, connecting with your spiritual support team. So you can uh, learn not just about spirit guides, but others that help you in your particular spiritual support team in your life, uh, in your mediumship, and in all ways. So without further ado, we'll get into our topic for today, which is vortexes of Lily Dale. And Patricia, what is a vortex? Well, a vortex, you know, we, we look at uh, everyday life and people call a vortex a mass of whirling fluid or air. And, uh, you know, in everyday life, uh, people will refer to that. But met, being metaphysicians, uh, knowing about the unseen world, those of us in Lilydale and other places that are uh, accustomed to talking that way, a vortex is a whirling of energy and a, a sacred place even referred to as a place a vortex uh, a sacred place where high vibration energy whirls with intensity in a circular direction and so we've you know i've 
walked on the grounds of Lilydale for 53 years. I lived there and walked my dog for 43 years and just noticed that there were places where the energy was high and it was, it was like a whirling energy. So I decided to learn more about vortexes a long time ago. And then finally, I wrote a little book on it and people just really like to come to Lilydale and experience not only, you know, the place that they feel a lot of energy, but to really know it as a whirling energy and that uh, again it can be large it can be small and depending on uh, what's going on human interaction with vortexes make them bigger and um, and i noticed that so it's uh, it's exciting to talk about the vortexes of lilydale today absolutely i think that's something that as soon as people come through the gates they do feel the change of the energy and then when they visit the different spaces as you said there's an, a, an accumulation of energy that assists with that and you know what are some of the things that people commonly feel when they uh, are recognizing a vortex that they're at a vortex well you know i i think we can start at the gate because um i know that a lot of people will tell you that they feel the energy the minute they turn off Route 60 onto Dale Drive. And it gets more intense and more intense and more intense the closer they get to the Lilydale Gate. And what I noticed at the gate, the gate has a vortex of energy and there's a special angel there that abides over that energy. And so when it's seasoned, the vortex grows. It, it can actually grow as big as touching out to the uh, the perimeter of Route 60. And then when things calm down again, it kind of shrinks and comes back. Um, but you can feel that that beautiful, it's like a, uh, it's like a calm. It's like a peace that you feel uh, in the summer when you turn off Route 60 and the other times you feel a peace as you get close to the gate sometimes a little bit of excitement, a gentle excitement. And um, so, yeah, that's one of the, one of the uh, vortexes that you can feel uh, grow and, and shrink. But a lot of people uh, will notice the stump. The stump is a really intense vortex of energy. And mediums and students of mediumship, we're all mediums, uh, those of us that practice mediumship, it's easy because it's such an aggressive and big vortex at the stump where the forest temple is in contrast. I, I always say that it's a male energy, a, a yang energy there at the stump. And then at the forest Tem temple, it's a beautiful vortex, a whirling energy of the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. It's so soft, but equally as powerful as the stump. But when you give messages there and you receive messages there, <clears throat> they're usually very comforting, very mother-like, very nurturing. And mm -hmm. when we sit there in the summer for the services at the Forest Temple, there's usually a little breeze. It's a little cooler on those hot days. It's as if, you know, the mother is uh, nurturing us. And at the stump, it's like energizing. <laughs> so yes. um, really different feelings with different energies. And I was actually directed in my meditation to go to the Lyceum lawn, which is a vortex, the children's uh, Lyceum. Behind the Lyceum, there's a beautiful uh, field. And I was directed to go to that um, vortex for the, for the equinox or no, the eclipse for the eclipse on the eighth. So I will be there at the time when, if and thus things change, I will be there. And uh, I know that it will be the perfect place to experience the full, wow, we are so, so very blessed to have the full impact of that eclipse. Now, years ago, and I, I could have lived, looked up the date, but years ago I had a workshop that was, uh, on the exact date of another eclipse that happened in Lilydale, it wasn't a total, uh, but it was a partial eclipse. And my students and I, and I uh, prepared with the special glasses and everything. And we had pinholes with paper and, you know, we did all the things that were, were fun with that uh, eclipse right there on the Lyceum lawn. Again, um, it's a great place to view because there's no obstruction, 
no view uh, uh, with the sky. Uh, it's a good place to, that, that vortex is a good place to uh, observe the stars also. Uh, if you're ever in Lilydale at night on a clear evening to go out on that lawn and lie down on the grass and look up at the sky, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, place to observe the stars. So yeah, uh, different feelings for different vor vortexes. Yes, I would agree with that. And, you know, as you were saying, uh, the, the stump does have that boom. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that it's, I always consider the inspiration stump to be like an outdoor cathedral because we've got those old ancient trees that are so very tall and they arc above us um like like a cathedral would if like a, a tall one uh, like a basilica kind of effect that that yes. can be there and then you've you've got this um the trees that kind of talk during that time and the inspiration stump and then also the the forest temple is that sweet feminine as you said it, it, it's a a different kind of lighter area feeling that's there that's very nurturing and and not as pushy right <laughs> and and then uh the lyceum is is the children's acre area where children uh laugh and play and and they have that that whole field behind the building to to run in and you know fly kites in and, and that has that kind of uh energy as well as a lot of water energy that's up there too there, despite it being so close to the wood line. Yeah, there's a, a an underground energy that runs from that vortex on the Lyceum lawn, a subterranean energy that runs from there into the lake, the upper lake. Um, so I don't know if, you know, if people have noticed that. I know some people have, and I wrote, a, I think I wrote a little piece about it in the book. And also people who have lost children I direct them to that vortex there on the Lyceum the lawn and back of the Lyceum. And they often have really beautiful communication with their deceased children. Uh, so it's a, 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 a comforting place for parents and people who have lost little ones. So, and it's a joyful one. It's not sad. It's no. like you said, so many children go there and play and spirit children go there to play too and run and skip and jump and uh, play. So it's a beautiful, that, that Lyceum uh, vortex is very evident if you stand even near it. And it moves too. It moves a little bit from time to time now isn't uh, that interesting it moves uh, a bit uh, to what extent do ley lines have uh any bearing on the positioning of a vortex they do uh they affect it it's like a mag a magnet um it may expand the vortex on one edge or it may pull the vortex out of circular to an oblong um i don't i know that um my classes and I have moved ley lines at times. Um, and we did, you know, we moved some ley lines one time to move a, a healing vortex from one home to another, which was interesting. Um, and it worked. We were doing, let's see, what were, oh, we were doing uh, trance channeling and I had rented somebody's house in Lilydale to do that workshop. and. Uh, back in the day when you could do that and we moved uh, a healing vortex from my house with ley lines we moved the ley lines and the vortex followed it uh, to another home so yeah the ley lines uh, can affect and move uh, vortexes and ley lines for those pe people who don't understand what we what we're talking about about in, in terms of this these are lines of energy that are not laid down in a grid an equal grid pattern um some sometimes it's they're, they're much more <laughs> abstract lines <laughs> that, that are forces uh in in the earth and that you can feel the connection and positioning of even though you're on the earth and sometimes where ley lines intersect there is uh an increase of energy and and certain um, vortex can vortexes can emerge through those ley lines intersecting. 
you know, in England, people know more about that because ley lines have been in their environment and recognized for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in uh, England, I remember uh, noticing the ley lines, even with uh, property lines. Mm -hmm. uh, English, the English people will uh, even divide a property by the ley line. And also the, the sacred places in England, like at uh, Glastonbury or at uh, the mound of, of Tor uh, with St. Michael's Cathedral at the top, you'll find ley lines there that will coordinate with the sacred site. Um, so it's, um, you know, if you want to really experience ley lines that have been honored by humans for a long time and are very strong, England is a great place to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you can even see it, tree lines and uh, even river, little creeks and rivers will run along uh, ley lines there that are recognized by humans. So it, that's a whole other show. <laughs> but it's it really a, is. And really a great, uh, good question. Yeah, good yes. Question. And maybe we'll have to do a bit more with ley lines another time. But yeah. uh, when, when it comes to vortexes and that kind of energy, some people may say, well, I'm concerned about a vortex. Because when you think about this idea of the whirling energy, they're thinking, I'm going to be sucked into a world of energy. <laughs> Is this a portal to another dimension? <laughs> and all of these kinds of things. You know, they, they have these um, um, movie Hollywood, Hollywood ideas. Oh, yeah. Would well, you I don't, say? Yeah, I don't watch those, but I can imagine they do. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that you can make anything frightening. Yes. And, you know, human beings love to be frightened. Have you noticed, you know? Oh, they pay. Yeah. That's well, how you sell tickets, TV. right? Yeah. So <laughs> I really, um, I recognize that as it can be fun, but please don't forget that it's just, it, you can shut it off you know, right. by your own free will. It's like, please yeah. don't get bought into it. I, you know, when I used to babysit for kids, they love to play monster. And, you know, you can be the monster and chase them around the house and they love it. And you can make noises and put your arms up in the air and kids just love it. And then it's like, oops, it's time for lunch. Okay, monster's gone. We're all back to normal. And so there's no more fear because the fear was just understood as a game. Well, yes. you know, as adults, we need to realize that it's just a game humans are playing. They're making up these books and these stories and these, um, you know, movies and all kinds of things that, that are based on uh, horror, fright, right. but it's just a game and we can uh, put the truth, see, truth is what dispels um, fear and put yes. the truth in, in uh, our lives and say, oh, that's just humans making up fear again. Well, we can find it everywhere, you know, like let's scare each other and say it's the end of the world. How many times? Right. Have <laughs> you know, so I vortexes are positive experiences. <laughs> they are. And, you know, certainly you don't necessarily want to live 100% uh, in a vortex per se, depending, depending. I mean, you need to have your time there. It usually is a great place for meditation or, you know, for healing or for mediumship or, you, you know, sometimes vortexes have purposes. Oh, absolutely. And insisting in higher vibrational work. Yeah. And so that's the way we want to think about vortexes, interact with vortexes. Any other tips you have for people in terms of interacting with vortexes? Well, I, I don't want to say that it's not true that there are negative uh, aspects that, that they actually people can create a vortex that's negative. Um, and, you know, I, um, I, again, would not be part of that. I don't choose to be part of that because I don't even like watching those movies or reading those books. But um, so, you know, you but it's just like everything else in life. You must realize that you have the law of uh, creative reality that you can create and uncreate a negative vortex. And so if you find yourself in a negative vortex, you can either get out of there and recognize it, or you can uh, dispel it. You can break it down. You can collapse it. Um, some are, again, <laughs> there's a, there's a place in Gettysburg a lot of people go to Gettysburg because there's a, a vortex there 
that attracts a lot of deceased soldiers that really don't want to leave. Uh, they're earthbounds, and a lot of them just don't want to, to leave the earth plane. They want to hang out and be part of the excitement of the wartime. Um, and then there's others that are lost um, in Gettysburg, uh, wanting to be in spirit, and others that just visit, you know, people. Yeah, that... I think the vast majority would be busy. Hauntings are not really i do i do hear what you're saying about there being a vortex there of energy yeah. that, that can happen in that you know when people think of a vortex sometimes they're thinking of um like ghostbusters oh look because all of these spirits are are are, in, are all in this um portal to another dimension but yeah. that's not really how we want to look about vortexes no, no. right Okay, what what did you ask now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so in terms and tips for people when they're wanting to positively interact with a vortex. Okay, well, again, I th I want to say, you know, you may be familiar with Lilydale, you've walked around a lot, you've experienced the grounds, or if you read my book and you say, "Oh, wow, uh, I never realized that the beach had a, vo a vortex and it has deep history. I want to experience that." And that uh, a lot of times the um, ceremonies at the sweat lodge will uh, contain that energy, that healing energy that's at the beach. And it's interesting, sweat lodge is like a prayer meeting, but often it's very joyful and um, beach-like energy that's, that's mm -hmm. happy and playful. And, um, you know, the beach used to have a beach house where they played cards upstairs and they had a bowling alley downstairs right, and they had right, a fairy right. wheel and, you know, so there's a, a lot of uh, things that you can recognize and also read in the book and say, I want to experience it. Mm -hmm. um, or your friends may say, oh, wow, you know, I, I had a, a great message at the uh, message service at the uh, Forest Temple and it was really different than any message that I've ever received uh, or you know, uh, yeah, there's supposed to be a vortex um, uh, at the uh, in the middle of the lawn there at the lacing. Let's go see if we can see where it is. And a lot of people take dowsing rods to recognize where the vortex center is, or they use a pendulum. So -hmm. that's fun to get together with some people or just on your own go and experience where strong a strong energy is a whirling strong energy it could be and this is done with a sacred joy this oh, is done absolutely. with that kind of intention behind it and really in that space of i i am entering into this in a sacred way and in a joyful way and in a positive way so i i think that's right. really important even our own healing you know where's where would be the most healing place for me to meditate today on the grounds <laughs> And yeah. so, you know, using your pendulum or your dowsing rods or just your hands, you know, oftentimes I douse just by putting my hands out and saying, well, what's the energy here? So it, again, you, you can get a feeling, you can get a message from spirit, you can have your higher guidance tell you, today, why don't you meditate um, out at the stump? And right. oh, I want to mention too, at the stump is a great place to, even though there's a lot of trees, especially like in the fall, or the early spring, like now, it's a good place if it's warm enough to go out there and do a midnight stump. And the stars light up the trees like there's little lights in all the trees. And of course, the elementals are out there too, which makes them more easily recognized too, the vortex of the, the stump. Um, and of course, you walk down the um, path of the stump, there's a lot of elemental energy along the edges of that. And often, um, Vortexes have um, branches that swirl mm. out, and so the swirling out down the path of the um, uh, stump is there, and you can feel it as it you come into the stump. It's like it becomes more circular, and yeah. and the same with the Route 60, the Dale Drive. You come down Dale Drive, and when you come into Lilydale, it's like there's a a whirl of energy. It's like oh. You almost want to go around the gate. <laughs> right. That's true. 
Oh, let's circle around here. This is nice energy, peaceful, calming. I'm glad I'm here. I could leave my stress behind. Uh, yeah, so there's lots of... Uh, lots and of it, it always is rem rem reminiscent to me of the Sufi dancers when they do the whirling dervish and they have one hand up and one hand down and then there's a purposefulness of uh, energetically being in the dance and creating that powerful vortex of connection uh, with their soul, with their divine uh, understanding of things. So like you said, there is a little bit of that swirl that happens right at the gate. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. That's a beautiful. Yeah. So uh, next time you're there, uh, just uh, let yourself be in that vortex. Uh, the people that work in the gate sometimes are affected by it. I know uh, they're lifted. And a lot of times the people at the gate are very friendly and bubbly and energetic. And I just love it. So I'm glad they're they're there in that vortex. Yeah, the gatekeeper of the vortex, as it were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the there. Yeah. And and uh, as you were as you were saying before, uh, vortexes can change depending on who enters into that space. Yes. So if you are meditating at Inspiration Stump or at the Forest Temple uh, alone in that space, you'll have a, a different sense of what that energy is like versus when a group of people are there. That's right. And Absolutely. the intention that they put toward that experience that you are uh together of uh, creating and manifesting mm -hmm. in that space so that's why it's important to enter with that prayerful intention and and to hold the energy in that light and love whenever you're in those spaces it's much more effective and that there is um i it, there is a stored energy that happens within a vortex but then there is also that uh that pull of renewal that happens yes yes absolutely and um vortexes attract of course you know we we work with energy and we know that one of the natural laws is that like attracts like so if you're you're in i you know i often say if you want to attract a message from your mother or your grandmother go to the forest temple if you want to attract uh, the energy of your deceased father or grandfather or uncle I go to the, the stump, uh, you know, kind of goes along with those energies of yin and yang. Um, or if, you're, if your aunt was very aggressive and she was a businesswoman and you want to get some advice from her, go to the stump and get a message. <laughs> if you want to be nurtured and you want to feel loved, go to the uh, forest temple. It's just, you know, it doesn't have to be your mother, it can be the great mother, uh, which I often sense there, the divine feminine. Uh, mm -hmm. And right across from the uh, forest, or yeah, the forest temple is the mother's garden, which a lot of people don't uh, don't know about. And that's a beautiful smaller vortex. It's building; more people know about it. But it's a beautiful uh, feminine, mothering, nurturing energy for anybody uh, that wants that. And I want to just mention uh, while I'm at that, I just saw a pet there. Um, mentioned too that. You know, pets are attracted to these vortexes. Uh, my cat, uh, Tiger, he had an uh, an accident and he had to have stitches along his side. And he used to, I lived right across from the healing temple, and he used to go over every morning and lay on the porch of the healing temple. And people would pet him and talk with him. And he healed, really, the vet was just amazed. Like, how did this cat heal so quickly? So uh, pets and my, of course, I walked my dog. That's how I found all these vortexes. All of my dogs that I had in Lilydale, I had three dogs. Um, they all would go to certain areas uh, that were, you know, you know, charged with the energy of a vortex. So for different reasons for different reasons yes and it's nice that not every area has a vortex because people will say some people will probably say well why isn't this a vortex why isn't that a vortex <laughs> yeah it's it, you kind of need to be able to step in and out of the energy and not uh, always be in in that uh, there are other things that need to happen in your life <laughs> <True. laughs> well, some are minor vortexes too and it's interesting in the in the book uh, for the vortexes, I promised at the end that I would do the minor vortexes of Lilydale, and I listed them. 
And one of them is the Troll Alley. I can't even walk to the Troll Alley anymore. I ha I'll have to make a map <laughs> for other people to go to it because it's down, you know, where the, um, let's see, where the uh, ferry trail used to be was mm -hmm. on the edge of that steep uh, decline. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I'd want to go down that. Well, I no, could, you shouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't choose to, but it's down in there. And then you go across that little bridge and then up again and over mm -hmm. to get to the troll alley, which is a minor vortex. So there's not as minor much energy yeah. there. True. But for elementals, it's uh, pretty cool. If you like to, if you like to observe elementals, that whole area down there is, is energetic for that. It's and, definitely ripe for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And it, but it's minor. It's minor vortexes, right? True. Now. And, that can and so let, let's just lean into that understanding of the minor versus the major. In the terms of the major ones, those seem to be, uh, for Lilydale, ones that are, are more used on a group level, would you say? Yes. And some of them were formed even before we got there mm -hmm. as spiritualist. Um, I I know just by meditating in the energy at the beach that it was used by the Native Americans, the American Indians that lived in the area, just because of the way it's formed in the lake. You know, it's a natural place in the lake. It kind of sticks out a little bit and um, you can, and it's flat. And I can tell that that, that vortex down there was formed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So when the spiritualists came, of course, they were drawn to that area too. Mm -hmm. And again, we built a beach house there. We had a Ferris wheel there. We had our electric generating plant there a long time ago. Uh, people bowled there and uh, played games on the beach. And uh, so I know that, you know, people kept energizing that. So it's a major vortex. Mm -hmm. But something like the Wolf Clan circle of stumps there, um, that, you know, actually the Senecas came down and picked that place. And it, we have signs up now about it. And I I do a lot of times I take my classes there. Over the years, a lot of times I would take my classes there. And we would have ceremony there a lot mm -hmm. of times, the Wolf Clan circle. Um, so that's a major now because so many people have used it and it was you know so much thought of as a sacred place uh with this you know the senecas coming to establish it and people using it and it's right across from the hotel so a right. lot of people go over there and meditate on the stumps um yeah so and then there's places uh that are minor we know, oh, the pump house, oh, mm -hmm. how bad the pump house is deteriorating because the pump house was a minor vortex, but so beautiful. Again, I would take my classes over there and we would do classes. We would do circles in the pump house, in the park up there uh, near the uh, for, uh, forest temple and the uh, healing temple. Yes. But now people are not using the pump house. Yeah. And uh, the energy is going down a bit. It's not as energetic as it so used to be. So isn't that interesting? There's a symbi symbiotic relationship between human use of a vortex, yes. is what I'm hearing you say, that yeah. the, the more um, that that is considered or used energetically in that particular way, it actually builds it up. Mm -hmm. Or, or it, a vortex can fall into disrepair. <laughs> yes, well, energetically... Um, it's a sacred place and the pump house actually used to have water a pump the pump's still there but it isn't hooked up so water comes through it but it used to be where water came there water is very uh conducive to uh, a vortex a sacred space vortex so the water that came through there and people brought their buckets and would have uh, got, there wasn't running water for a long time in Lilydale. It was just little summer cottages or summer tents that people right. put up and they'd go up to the pump house to get their water. So that was a, a place where people met. It was a place where people pumped water. And that was the only water in Lilydale for a while. So that at that time was a very energetic uh, vortex, a small yes. vortex. But then that waned away, you know, and then 
we started doing classes in Lilydale and people went to that place and more people came to Lilydale. So that became uh, again, you know, after a wane of energy, uh, it, it waxed again, but now it's in disrepair and the energy is dissipating again to not mm -hmm. as strong. So yes, and again, it's not just because of humans. There right. are uh, the uh, again, there was a vortex at the stump before the Lilydale people, the free thinkers came, and there was a vortex at the beach before the free thinkers came. Sure. Uh, so you know it depends, uh, but humans certainly. If you've been to the vortexes at uh, Sedona, you see how that works too. And um, of course, uh, some of the major sacred places in the world, like Machu Picchu, oh my gosh, the vortex there is so energetic and so huge. And the same at Delphi in uh, Greece. We were actually, I took a group to Delphi in Greece at the time when there was in the path of a full eclipse. And we were blessed to be able to meditate and uh, ascend the hill there to the Olympic field from the Temple of Apollo up to the Olympic field there in uh, a, com a full eclipse of the sun uh, and moon. So it, it was just, um, you know, around the world there are so many uh, vortexes that, um, you know, I know many of you have felt. And of course, the Great Pyramid at Giza, mm -hmm. uh, the King's Chamber is just so energetic and lying down in that sarcophagus you're you're transported uh, it literally transported in the energy there mm -hmm. and so that i've been a, I've been blessed to be able to do that twice and take classes where everybody i rented the whole pyramid which you think couldn't be possible but yeah how do you yeah. run a whole pyramid yeah <laughs> i did for an hour just for our group and we were each able to lie down in that sarcophagus and be transported in that vortex so yeah, you know, it's, uh, but we can do that in Lilydale, go up to the Lyceum lawn and lie down and <laughs> yes. watch the clouds and watch the stars or go to the stump and, you know, we're not supposed to, you know, stand on a stump or. Yeah, stump. don't, yeah, I have to respect that area. Yeah, but it's really it's important close. people. Yeah, yeah, you're close. It's so energetic, that, that vortex is so energetic. You can feel it in the front seat on the benches. Or take your lawn chair and sit closer to the, the stump. I think it's something to keep in mind is that uh, people tend to feel vortexes in nature areas. Yes. There's a theme here. Yes. It's uh, they can be out for a hike or maybe they have their own property and they can feel pull to a certain area as a vortex. And that's where they want to meditate. Uh, it doesn't seem to always be in line with a building. Although that is possible, but it tends to be more in a nature space, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that's what, uh, you know, that's why even a feng shui is based on, you know, ley lines and vortexes. And then they build buildings there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like, um, again, a, a lot of times in Europe, there were labyrinths. And they were vortexes. And then right. a, 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 the Christian church came along and wanted to, you know, wipe out paganism. So they would, they built the church right on that, um, that labyrinth. And some of them on the floors of the cathedrals over there will have the original labyrinth. But uh, yes, uh, so some of the buildings, I think, are more lined up because of nature. Mm -hmm. That nature is dynamic. Nature is uh, the power in the universe, you know, uh, manifest. So yes, I, I would I would say it's a hundred percent natural. And then humans have built buildings on the vortices, um, vortices and and maybe then they grew bigger. But yes, which leads me into the understanding of: Do you think that it is possible that people could build a structure and then a vortex be there or or is a vortex always having to be na naturally there occurring first and then the building you know let's, let's say effect of let's say the pyramid like people will sometimes sit under a pyramid and create that uh on a minor scale i guess you could say so what are your thoughts about that 
the does it always have to have been naturally occurring and then a building on top of it, or could anyone build a structure and thereby create a house? I think that's been done. Um, I wish I could remember. Oh, it's something a Tron. Maybe you know it's out in uh, the. Uh, it's out in California. It's out in the desert. Joshua Tree. It's out in near Joshua oh, Tree. Okay. And they built this building especially metaphysically as an energy generator okay and that place has a huge vortex and i don't think it was there before but i could be wrong i'm not you know i'm not a person who's been there a lot of times or anything but just hearing about it my friends in california even here a lot of people have heard of that and again i can't remember the name of it but that was built and and people recognize the architecture of that place as increasing uh, vortex and increasing vortex. So again, I don't know if that was, and again, you know, you wonder some of the buildings that you experience a lot of energy and you wonder if people were attracted to that place because there was a vortex there originally. It's it's really hard to say. It's like uh, vor vortex archaeology. It is. <laughs> it is, and it's so hard because it would be, you know, verbal. Most of it would be verbal, verbal tradition and record. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's a fascinating um, pyramid that's in Bosnia that oh. uh, they they when when they studied this, it has its own vibration of healing, uh, the way the water is in the pyramid. Um, the, there's a crystal bowl effect that's there. And when people stand higher up on one of the hill structures of it, because they thought it was just a hill. And oh. then they realized, oh, there's a pyramid under there. Yeah. And uh, that they can feel the vortex effects of, of that very strongly. And they have talked about that particular construction lending itself to creating a vortex there. So it's kind of a, you know, chicken and the, uh, or the egg. Right, which comes first? <laughs> right, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's I'm really sure. fascinating. And I know a lot of people are commenting how cool this subject is for them. Uh, you know, when it comes to vortexes and what they felt, and and some people have really felt, uh, let's say, during drumming, the native souls that are joining in during that time that are attracted into that space. Yes, yes, like attracts like, and that beautiful energy that, attracts. Music vibration can also assist. Yes. In well, there you go. There's the beach again. The the yes, drum circles that are down there on Friday nights during the season. There's yes. the building again. That energy is building at the beach, um, and it's it's fascinating. It's a it sacred really place is. down there for fun and enjoyment and entertainment and yeah, really really a great energy. I take a book down there sometimes I know you do too and watch the kids play and and uh just sit under there's some trees down there in one area and there's uh, umbrellas sometimes where you can sit in the shade and other people suntan but yeah the beach uh, with the drum circles has increased and the activity of the sweat lodge and yeah yeah so isn't that interesting I, I think there's the ebb and the flow and the recognition uh, again, of what we bring as humans to an experience and how we can inter interact energetically with the things that are there around us, especially when you come to Lilydale. I hope this has inspired some folks to maybe just kind of uh, lean into that energy a little bit more and, and see what they pick up. And it may be different for you, you know, day one of a visit versus a, a week in, you may become more sensitized to certain energies and maybe uh, calibrating yourself uh, as well, because I do feel that that vortexes can help a person to calibrate a certain way if they can attune themselves to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know we need to finish up our show soon, but is there anything else that you think would be really great for people to know about vortexes? Vortexes in Lilydale. Well, again, um, I feel that it's so important that we meditate, that we quiet our lives um, and then be guided to listen. Uh, you know, we, we do a lot of talking like we're doing today with the with the show and we get a lot from that. But to go to Lilydale or before you go to Lilydale, 
to meditate, to quiet yourself and ask your higher guidance, uh, what vortex or what area of Lilydale would be conducive to what you want to manifest there? Would, are you going for healing? Are you going for information and truth? Are you going to be comforted? Uh, do you need to be healed in some area of your life? And to use your highest guidance to be guided to these energetic places that can magnify the effect. And that's absolutely pow empowering. Mother Nature is so empowering. You know, she's a dynamic woman and she is, for all of us there, you know, our, our, our divine mother. And so nature, like you were saying, you know, it's so connected to the vor vortexes and we can be guided to the vortex that will allow us to manifest what we desire. And so whatever you desire, ask and be guided to the vortex in Lilydale, whether it be minor or major, uh, that will help you to make your dream come true, make your desire manifest, allow your, your uh, manifestation to happen and your intent uh, to be very clear. So again, whatever you know you're venturing in life, but especially if you're visiting Lilydale and you'd like to uh, experience some of the uh, the vortex, vortexes, the major vortexes, that's and the minors. Uh, it's a good way to get there. Uh, but meditation, of course, is something that I would recommend in all areas of your life, but especially mm -hmm. again the the vortex. And you may pick up something different. Um, I know when I, I, just going back to a little bit about finding vortexes, even when I was a child, I would walk home from school. I had about a quarter mile walk. And on uh, on the way, there was a big rock uh, and a little creek. And when I was troubled, I used to sit on that rock. I was drawn to that big rock and the water. And there was, you know, now I realized there was a vortex there. The water would swirl there because the big rock was in in the way so the water would come up and then swirl around and then go down and so i, I it, it was truly a vortex and when i was troubled i would sit there on that rock the beautiful vortex energy would help me to connect with a solution connect mm. with comfort and so as i sat there and i felt better then i'd go on my way but you know kids and people in general don't even have names for it, but they are finding for themselves healing vortexes or uh, truth vortexes or, um, you know, comforting vortexes. They're, it's a natural thing for humans to do. And again, that's something we don't put labels on, we don't have names for until we come together. And that's why Lilydale is so special. Come together with people who speak your language, <laughs> who mm -hmm. say, oh, yes, I had a special place. And oh, that must have been a vortex. Or yes, I felt the vortex. I, I felt where the center is. And again, that's really fun with a, bent, a pendulum or a dowsing rods or just your hands. Let's find the center of this vortex. What do you think? You know, where are you feeling the most energy? Uh, does it swirl in a clockwise or a counterclockwise way? So all those things can be fun uh, yes. to work with a, a, a vortex. And I think the, those are such great points. And I like your story about the rock and, and how you could feel the connection. You know now what that was about for yourself. I think other, that's very relatable. I think a lot of other people may have, may recognize, oh my goodness, that's something I have had myself and now I recognize it for what it is and I'll just uh, throw another little thing at folks is that uh, we have chakras and we have the seven major chakras with minor chakras as well and those are wheels of light and some people would consider those to be mini vortexes they so are. even upon the topography the energetic topography of your own being you have vortexes and that it is responding to the energy of other people's vortexes and the vortexes of the land and all of that. And, and so there's a responsiveness that comes in those ways. And, and you may attune yourself energetically to be more in balance with your, your own vortexes. And that it's one another reason why we can feel drawn to certain kinds of, as Patricia was mentioning, the yin and the yang, of energy and what's needed most during those healing times for us. So, 
Absolutely. Yes, that's that's so true. Absolutely. It's, it's gorgeous to think of all the interaction of all these vertexes, but don't get yourself too overwhelmed. Just enjoy <laughs> the experience. Right, you can <laughs> overthink it. <laughs> you can overthink it, but there's a whole lot that co goes into assisting you in your life, energetically connecting strongly with that which uh, is your divine truth. And the things that you manifest could come in divine right timing, divine right order and we certainly affirm that for you and uh, patricia is a, a strong one for uh being a, a good agreement partner a, a good agreement partner of affirming that which is in a person's divine right timing divine right good absolutely yes yeah yeah absolutely. that helped me a lot in my life and um i think well i, I think i learned that from unity t uh, teachers when i was young about divine right timing and divine order and it just resonated with me although a lot of other people use it and use sure. those terms but it just helped me to realize that there is well i'm a mathematics nut so i love yes, the yes. order of the universe and uh <laughs> so yes knowing that there is a divine right time knowing that there is a divine right order and chaos is included in that. So again, we could get on a whole. Uh, I know we, could, we have to have you back on the show to talk about some yeah. of these other topics. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. You're but... always a delight, Patricia. And I encourage people to take a look at Patricia's book. You can find that on Amazon, right? Yes. Vortexes of Lilydale by Patricia Price. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I did uh, just recently put out a book in, in that series because this is a series. Uh, the second book in that series is the healing temple whoops i guess i can't do that oh you can't it's do it, a, can't show it. <laughs> on uh the just the healing temple and the vortex that's there and the history of it uh with pictures of may west and the founder yeah. of the healing temple and jack kelly and uh the idea that there's sacred symbols in the in the healing temple that create vortexes uh in the temple itself and of course, the man who built the temple was a Rosicrucian, so he was very metaphysical. And he built the temple for Jack Kelly, who was a tremendous healer. And so, you know, you can go into the healing temple and find minor vortexes. And at the book, is it's a booklet, uh, but, and, it, and the history is fascinating. So that's another little, little book in the series that the first book is the vortexes. And the third book is a, an inspiration of this uh, eclipse and my meditation, my higher guidance said, on the day of the eclipse, start a, another book in this series on the Leland Woods. Wow. And it's sacredness because we promised, Lilydale promised when we bought that property that it would remain, well, they call it a, vir a virgin forest back then, but we know it's an old growth. Old growth. Very mm -hmm. rare. And for us to honor that and uh, Mrs. Penningill, who sold it to Lilydale, made them promise they would keep it that way. So we need to remind ourselves of the history and th that we are keepers of that sacred land, the Leland Forest. And that yeah. is all of Lilydale. That's just when you start the gate to the stump, that's the Leland Forest. It goes right along that back road, goes out to the main road, and then there's a back fence that is that is the Leland Wood, never been logged. I have right. a picture of somebody up in the cupola over across the lake that took a picture in the 1800s where all the land was uh, bare because it had been logged except for the Leland Woods. Wow. Um, wow. We need to remember that. So this book, an inspiration of this eclipse for me is something that people will be able to refer to as the real history of Lilydale and the real history of uh, this sacred natural spot, the Leland Woods. So yes, I'm I'm writing now. I'm you know yes, it's this is my wisdom years, and uh, I've shifted gears into semi-retirement, and I just love writing. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm trusting that you will gain from all of my experience and the information I've gathered in this life. So thank you, uh, Willa, for uh, having me on today. I, I really appreciated uh, the idea of talking with you and interacting with people out there. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being on the show today. What a lovely thing. And I know a lot of people are talking about how they really appreciate the show 
in particular, especially as they're preparing to come for the either the solar eclipse or for the summer season, yes. and they feel more energetically prepared to enjoy it. And so thank you. Thank you, everyone, again for tuning in today. And uh, next week, I will have on my show Gregory Keene. So Greg Keene will come on and we'll talk about, uh, you know, letting go of the limitations in your mediumship and uh, how to go about doing that. So I think it'll be another great show for you. And I've got so many great guests uh, that are coming on in the next few months. So tune in on Wednesdays with Willa at 10 a.m. Eastern on Wednesdays on my Facebook page, Willa White Media. All right, everyone, take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.